chair because your, de your desk is larger than mine. Your available table space, at least. The what? The table space you got available. The what? <laughs> table space. Talking to the mic. The table space. This shit again. Fuck. Yes, this shit again. This shit again. It's always going to be this shit again. Yes, sir. Jeez. Anyway, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Cold Brew Grind. This time, we actually have... Well, I mean, I actually still have coffee. We had coffee. Uh, you had coffee. I had coffee. I, and I, I gave up alcohol for coffee. No, I'm just kidding. Not really. I mean, probably should. I mean, I don't really drink much to begin with. Yeah, but you're kind of a bad drunk. Nah, am I? Yeah, you're pretty sloppy. I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? It means you can't handle your alcohol. That's rude. It ain't rude if it's true. Kind of rude, dude. I mean, that's all right. So what are you doing? Currently uh, working on this Yu-Gi-Oh deck. No. You know, I'd be really fucked up. If you just slashed everything. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Yep. I remember uh, when I used to actually play tournaments. I remember you would walk up to my opponent, uh, walk up to my opponent, and be like, "Hey, are you guys still dueling?" And be like, "Nah, we're done." And then <laughs> immediately just throw my shit across the table. <laughs> and the guy would look at me, and I'd just be like, just, "I'd be like, just ignore him. He's an fun asshole. times, fun times." Jeez, that shit was fun. That was bullying, funny. Bullying me. Nonsense. I would never bully a person. Okay. <laughs> Okay. But yeah. I don't know. I feel like I choose the worst time to pick up hobbies because during coronavirus, it's like no one even playing Yu Gi Oh! in person anymore. It's all online. I mean, you can just build it here and then. Test it. You know, online. yeah, and then just take it online. Oh, the Talking to the mic. The problem with playing online is uh, everyone likes to automatically play cards that they'll never afford in real life. Into the mic. Into the mic. Jesus Christ. Jeez. You can still hear me just fine. No, I can't. Well, you're right in front of me, so I would hope you can at least hear me. Yeah, but me. the mic's supposed to pick you up. The mic is too small to pick me up, sir. I would. No, you're supposed enough. to talk into it. I am talking into it. But yeah, in, online you have people that uh, won't really play things they'll play in real life. Although, I guess... It's a decent way to get ready for really BS Wasn't, matchups. Isn't that kind of like the whole thing, though, with online? You kinda, you're able to play your fantasy? Test play the best case scenario, I guess. Yeah. This is true. But, um, yeah. You have no idea how much how much out of the urge right now to do it again. No. I'm fighting the urge right now. Thank you. Keep fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded like the Stroke King uh, right there. <laughs> 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 well, he was, here, he was here last night, but there was, like, no action. No action? No how, action. How can you Although, because well, I didn't hear anything. All right. I was going to say, although, did, he did have the music on, so. Maybe she. And, and, and it was, like, groove music for. <laughs> Maybe his guest got tired of faking. I don't so. know. Oh, you want to know the funny part? He's actually here. Oh, really? Yeah. Were you able to identify the I actually know. I actually know which one it is now. You know which uh, studio it is? Right across. <laughs> oh dear That's amazing So, so, so like, I, I actually found out which one So there's a high probability That the Stroke King knows That we know of him <laughs> Ooh, Possibly Drama Oh goodness So what are you building here? Uh, well it's a deck called Machina And it's just machines I mean if the name doesn't give it away and I'm just uh, tinkering with it, I'm trying to see ways to make it a little playable while not being too expensive. I'm actually leaning towards the rank 8 spam, because the more I play it, the more this card is dead. How about how about explaining what rank 8 spam is? Well, rank 8 spam is abusing something called levels, and you have monsters that have these levels, like level 8. And there's a high amount of level 8 monsters in this deck. Whereas I'm only playing three level sevens, which I thought would be really fun because they have easy summoning condition and good damage. But I have yet to be in a situation where I'm actually just throwing them down to attack people. But, you know, it could just be... 
could just be a lack of uh, playtesting because I haven't really played against that many people. I'll, I'll take it online. Probably eventually. Yeah, I'll probably take it online because all the card shops nearby don't have the cards I need, so <laughs> gotta gotta improvise. Yeah, I'm playing some. And then they, they've stuff. been like really freaking low uh, uh, online. Online, like um, quantities? yeah, the qu- quantities. Since I guess everyone's doing online now. <laughs> yeah, it's a really strange time to do the thing. I wonder if this is going to be the push Konami needed to actually make their own dual simulator instead of just make it and forcing everyone to use third party sites. Once again, talking to the mic. I am talking to the mic. No, you didn't. You had it to the side, bro. Into the mic Hanging a bit to the side it's ha, like You ha. need to be directly into it I see Yes Anyways But yes uh, No you know I'm pretty much good Ami's not gonna do it Yeah they won't There's no reason I'll to. just freaking do another What is it Duel Links or whatever Duel Links part two I mean they could've they, they could've already done it Instead of doing Duel Links But They wanted to go for the cash grab I guess Of course They wanted to freaking Jump into them freaking Mobile gaming What better way than Yu-Gi-Oh yeah, Duel Links wasn't bad. I mean, it's kind of fun, but the three, the limitations are a bit irritating, I guess. So like what, Speed Duels? Speed Duels are interesting. I don't know if they have that on Lynx. I haven't really played Lynx recently. But I remember the field itself is cut down. It's like three and three instead of five and five. So that really drastically affects the meta, as opposed to like when you're playing in real life, you just have the whole fields to just, like, do shenanigans with. You have to, like... You can't really do that too much. You mean you can't can't play solitaire? You can't... Well, yeah, I guess so. That's that's probably why they implemented that, so there's a little bit less solitaire going on. Now explain what solitaire is. Solitaire is a card game where you just play by yourself. (laughs) Like a lonely person. That much, you are much like your average card, much like your average Yu-Gi-Oh player. <laughs> <laughs> now, quick, look in the mirror. There's no mirrors here. All right, look at the what's it called? The reflective surface. No, these drums. the front, front, uh, front-facing camera. Oh, uh, like the office style. <laughs> just, just give it the blank, the blank face. I see. That's gonna be the freaking title of this. <laughs> what? The office? No, lonely like your average Yu Gi Oh player. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> uh, Why is the words by eternal? Yikes. <laughs> so did you see they uh, they nerfed Cthulhu? Good. Too many free wins as it was. And it crap. It didn't, but it makes them a lot less annoying to deal with. Hey, we're talking about Smite now. Smite. That's a fun game. Well, apparently the new the new the new god's supposed to be like the new e boy. The what? The, the new uh, e boy? Yeah. Oh, it's the new cash grab. Yeah, so because I guess before. Oh, it was, Sukuyomi. It was, yeah, apparently it was Susano before, and now now he got replaced by Sukuyomi. Like, yeah. <laughs> it seems interesting, but I think he's already gonna be broken on release. I looked over. Oh, of course. I briefly uh, looked over that's, his. That's how kit. it always goes. It's like, why are you guys doing this? Fix, hey, just fix freaking your... fix Cthulhu, first of all. Yeah, the the nerf it is, is a step in the right direction, but it's still overtuned. Cthulhu's lame. It's very. I do like. I I I said it last time though. I do like that Cthulhu's ult has the same effect on people as um, um, Baba Yaga's. For like, just kill it with fire. <laughs> yeah. It's like you see the ult over. Oh no! Attack it! Attack it! There he is, clapping. I mean, yeah, because you can't run away from it. The hit radius is like almost impossible yeah. to escape. So might as well turn around on it and just start attacking him. It's like a mural. It's like you know, you're getting slowed. May as well throw the hands. It's. Although I find it funny, I find it funnier that. Because your mural, you can you can jump out of it like really easily. Yeah. But I liked how your mirror has that, you know, freaking the fuck, f- you know, that that like kill it with fire effect. Yet, Sobek who can chase you down doesn't. <laughs> they still try to run away from Sobek. Well, I think that's why it's a moving target. It's a little bit harder to hit, and it has the bonus protections going on for it, which make it overall more of a headache. Yet it'd be the more obvious choice to kill it with fire because it's going to chase you down anyway. Yeah, but people panic. Which is always funny. Kind of yeah. like the freaking Scylla players. 
<laughs> so I'll, I'll just just go and run, run right into the Salah. They'll, they'll panic. They don't know. They won't know how to attack. It's actually a really great way because most of them will end up ulting something random, thinking you're gonna try to juke them out. It's like nah, G. That's, that's like the easiest way to freaking dodge a Scylla. Just walk into her. Just run into her. <laughs> Just run into them. So, what do you think are uh, the fundamentals of uh, MOBA? Just in general. Like, what do you feel are smite fundamentals? What? Fundamentals? Like, what are As things? in? Like, say you're trying to get a completely new person who's never touched a game into it. How would you show them the ropes? I ha- I'd pass them over to you. Why? Because you're the one with the patience here. That ain't right. <laughs> I ain't trying to deal with that shit. But you do anyway. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could start naming plenty of names. <laughs> more by force than anything. Because <laughs> you know I ain't dealing with that shit. Uh, this is true. This is true. I run away. <laughs> you run. I ain't having this shit. It's like, nope, I run away. I'm out. Like, no, sir. Not me. <laughs> I get really annoyed with new players. I get really annoyed with, with new players that don't listen. New players that don't listen? Yeah. My my beef is uh, new players that have an attitude. Like, sir, you are not in a position to well, be... Well, that's part of the whole not listening, so... No, I mean, not listening is one thing, but when they want to fight you on... Well, they usually don't listen making... and have an attitude over not listening, so... Yeah, but I'm talking about the people that, like, fight you over every little thing. Or, or how, how about the, the best one where... They think they know the, the game better than you. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> <sighs> that's always depressing. <laughs> like, you know, uh, I'm decent. I ain't, you know, I ain't, I ain't pro level, freaking weekend cyclone spin. Freaking. Is cyclone spin still around? Uh, he does normal stuff, I think. Uh, like, I know I know, I know, I see him in uh, weekend videos and streams, but. Nothing major. Yeah. I like that guy. I don't, I don't remember because I, I don't I don't I don't know if you've been watching the recent weekend videos where he he made a Google Doc basically for people to uh, what's it called uh, for people to try to uh, what's it called try to get unbanned unbanned like yeah what? from from his Twitch chat really how does that work uh, there was one there was one person who got banned by Cyclone Spin. Oh, uh, Cyclone, so Cyclone banned him? That's how you know Yeah, but right. you know why? Why? Because he basically went into Weekend's chat and said, Hey, you know, I watch your YouTube videos, you know, I, I, I finally, you know, finally was able to catch one, one of your streams. Ban! <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What? It's so dirty. <laughs> Cyclone just banned him. <laughs> I didn't know simping is a bannable offense now. <laughs> so. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you know we we can abandon. But that's, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah, like that, that was hilarious. It was like that's all he had said, and then like you see under in the chat, banned by Cyclone Spin. Savage. I don't know if I should applaud that or like. Really <laughs> it's just hilarious. It's like, bro, really? <laughs> Why you gotta do this? Why? Like poor guy. Like like the guy was just like gen- genuinely excited over the fact that hey, I finally got to catch a stream. But nope, Cyclone's like, nah, I ain't having none of this. It's so bad. That's talking to the mic, damn it. My condolences. I mean, I wasn't even talking yet. I mean, that's an easy fix. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> so rude. So rude, but yeah, it's hilarious. So the man just got banned for living his life dream, basically. Basically. That's, yeah, that sounds about right. So. I know it's a lot of, um, while the person hosting the community is usually an okay person, I know it's in every community, either Twitch or whatever, wherever there's a group chat. The uh, there's always like a few people in the community. Well, I mean, too far. I mean, well, I mean, in this situation, it's like, it's just it's just cyclone being cyclone. Is that really how he is? Yeah, it's just cyclone being cyclone. It's kind of douchey. That's real douchey. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. in every group of friends, you gotta have that. You you gotta have the <laughs> the be nice, <laughs> <laughs> be nice to these people. They ain't they haven't done anything wrong yet. <laughs> nah, Ben. <laughs> Liban. 
I don't know. Like, introducing someone to Smite, I don't know. It, like, there's really nothing you can do other than just go play. Go play? Yeah, recently a friend of mine is, uh, well, he's a buddy I do ranked with, who's going to remain unnamed for uh, all intents and purposes. <laughs> 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 so we do rank together and it's cool because like the <laughs> split happens so we're both like bronze to silver range so we're we out here smashing these w's because we're playing with people that don't know how to play you know all that fun stuff but lately his girlfriend has like gotten the itch to play smite so i'll be hitting my boy up like hey let's go play and he'll be like oh she wants to play i'm just like but rank <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm like but rank mijo please and then he's like you know and then like we'll play one or two games of rank he'll be like ah you right you know I'm gonna be alpha tell her nah it's time for the boys we're doing ranked and then one game later I have to go it's a meltdown I gotta deal with I'm like bro <laughs> why <laughs> porque <laughs> It's Maria. Jeez, it's it's <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just like, dude, why you gotta do me like this? <laughs> I mean, it's how it be? It's how it be. It's like, damn, dude. <laughs> I can't. Honestly, remember. honestly, I I I actually kind of expected you to be on like on the same boat. No, I'll be so. playing, and she'll be like, all right, have fun. I'm, I'll just be like, if I reply to you in twenty or thirty minutes, I'm not ignoring you. I'm probably losing. It's my. <laughs> like, I'm probably getting mad. Or uh, sometimes she'll watch or play. Because, you know, Discord has the little stream option now. Well, it has an option where you can stream it to uh, the voice chat channel. So I'll stream it for her and she'll just be watching. Ah. So it's like, it's ch we're chilling. But... Um, I have no patience for new people. Yeah. Did you just open the structures? No, this is just leftover stuff from the structure. Oh. I just packed it in there. I thought you opened the... Oh, there they are. No, not yet. Uh, and go talk her one. No, there's nothing really in there for it. So, yeah. So every t so I'll play like one or two games, two of them lucky. And then he has to get off because um, homegirl's upset. She's like getting attention. I'm like, bro, why? <laughs> Whereas when I'm like, okay, fine, she can play. Like, whatever. Like, I don't really feel like doing a ranked. I'm too tired anyway. Like, it'll drag on to like midnight or something. I'm like, all right, I'm going to bed. This is... <laughs> I mean, granted, she's improving like at a really good pace, but I'm trying to rank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I hit the point where I'm like, I, right, you know, what? I'm not even gonna ask you anymore. I'm gonna hit up your girl. <laughs> Be like, hey, can he play? <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> apparently the reason for it is um, like communication issue or something. Yeah. I, like I don't know. Like I'm not there, but that's what. That's what it looks like. That's what's being said, or that's how, because I got dragged into one of the little skirmishes over it, over oh, Discord. Geez. And I was there awkwardly. I'm like, hey, how's it going? It's, you know, it's, it's your boy. It's and Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they're just like, um, and then she's just like, yeah, we were playing. Like, he asked me to play like an hour ago. And he's like, oh, by the way, I'm going to kick you off at this time so I can do ranks. And I'm just like, hmm. If that's really how it went down, I mean, I can see why you're out here melting down, but bruh, you know, it's just a bunch of shenanigans, really. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Sounds fun. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's in its own way, it is. Alright, so, going back to this Yu-Gi-Oh thing, I'm thinking if I play Triple Machine Cannon, I can run Traded instead of Iron Draw. If I actually do want to max this thing out, what do you think? Nerd. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Back to you, Pete. No. Um. <laughs> so, this, this movie that I, I, I told you to watch. What about it? So, recently I've been on a Netflix documentary freaking binge. Um, watched like a, I watched that Kevin, Kevin Hartwood, the. the um, don't fuck this up. It's actually pretty good. There's a Kevin Hart one. Yeah, it was like five, it's five episodes, five episodes, where it's like it follows him along the like right before the whole controversy with uh, with uh, around the Oscars. 
Mm. And you, you remember about that? Did you hear about that? No. Basically, he since. got he got nominated. Yeah, he was gonna host the Oscars. I think like two years ago. Yeah. And then at the, like right like the next day, mysteriously, old tweets of his started reappearing and got got called out for it. Oh man! One of them said, you know, the main one. I'll just say, you know, the act, the the tweet that was like discussed about was where he said that if he had. Caught his son playing with his uh, daughter's toys or his daughter uh, dolls or whatever. Um, that he would basically grab the toy and and like smash it, uh, smash it all over his head and and say, "Stop that! That's gay." <laughs> Granted, this was actually part of his uh, stand up at the time too. Yeah, he was. So I mean, that's what I took it. But anyway, that's not the what you call it. The point is that they they came up. And that that documentary was following basically the, what led up to that. What led up to it coming up? Yeah, to, to that whole thing basically. So, including like the whole thing about him cheating on his wife. Bro, what? Yeah, he had cheated on his wife while she was pregnant. Do they like just dig really deep on this guy, or what's going on here? Well, it was just kind of like like basically what what led to becoming Kevin Hart to what it, the Kevin Hart that is now basically. Do we do we like Kevin Hart as he is now? Yes. Okay. So, just making sure because <laughs> I, I mean, I do. I mean, I I got nothing against what you call it. Like even you know, even like one of his. Well, um, I guess like after what happened, like one of his friends kind of like sat down with him and kind of like told him what was the issue with like the whole thing and his response and why his response was wrong. Yeah. And afterwards, he's like, oh, "Okay, yeah, I I missed." I missed that. Like that went over completely oh, over his head. Like what people wanted from him, basically. I see. And he was like, "All right, you know." He's like, "Yeah, you know, I should have handled that better. I should have." It's like I, I, I screwed that up, basically. I see. So, so he's kind of owning up. To, so he owned up to it after he realized it, or. I, I mean, by then, by then he was just. You know, by the time he realized it, it was too late, basically. Yeah, the, you know, the people that kind of were going to like him were the people that weren't, you know. The cancel community didn't say <laughs> yeah, got him. Yeah, so. I'm still very, I have mixed feelings about the cancel community. I don't think that's great. Anyway, point is, <laughs> you know, after that, you know, and then, and then what, what, that's, like, one of the things that was, like, I guess hard um, was that he had to talk to one of his um, execs. Executives? Yeah, because one of his ex um, is, is gay. Is like she is part of the uh, uh, she is a she is a LGBTQ, yeah. So he like kind of like while the, while he had the meeting with everybody, he like addressed her directly, and she was like, you know, she was basically like, yes, yeah. she was like, I know, she's like, I know that you know that's Kevin Hart of old, like the, the Kevin Hart from then isn't isn't the Kevin Hart now, so. That's well. Sounds like a pretty decent redemption arc, I guess. So, but it was it's kind of like, but yeah, I mean, it was good. I I already watched it like twice actually. Really? <laughs> it's actually pre- it's actually uh, pretty good. So, but anyway, um, yeah, I've been I've been watching documentaries and freaking on Netflix, and one of them that I, I came across in the middle of the night while I was just browsing to see because I had a long list of fucking documentaries was the Japanese Idol scene. Oh yes, I remember you suggested I, I watch it. Yes, the Japanese idol scene. It wasn't like what's the two it followed. Them? It followed, I think, like two or three idols that were trying to make it. Trying? What happened? I said like there were their idols, but they weren't like the big ones. Basically, like one of them was um, one of them, like the main chick. She was an idol temporarily. Like she just wanted to be an idol to uh, jumpstart her music, her singing career. So like she was, she, you know, she was very adamant of like, this isn't where I want to be. Like I'm just using this as a jump start to be able to sing and do what I actually want to do. Right. The the cool thing, I mean, one first of all, it, it turned it started out kind of weird, kind of creepy, because, but at the same time, it was it was like, okay, like that, that makes sense. Like there's this weird. Like during during like their, their meeting greets and stuff like that, they have. Not just meet and greets. They have handshake events okay. where you get to shake hands with the idol. Right, right. And then a lot of weird, creepy things happen there. I imagine. Not really. That's that, that's that's the funny part is that you see these guys that are like late thirties, forties, fifties. You know, like they already look you know in freaking middle age or whatever. But 
it's just like weird kind of you would think I was like oh they're just you know creepy horny guys basically right but there's this like level of respect of where it's not even it's like they're they're admiring them basically really it's like more an ad- admiration than uh like look at the pretty girl basically really so it's it's like really weird it's like really interesting at the same time but it's it was I do like one because it followed, you know, I think it followed, it followed like three, uh, three idols, and then like two, three um, fans. All right. And one of the fans, this one guy who, um, it, was, it started out kind of sad because he was kind of like, I went to university, you know, he went to what you call it, and then he says it himself where he's like, I he's like, I took the easy way out and just decided to be a salary man. Ah. A salary, like a uh, office office person. Yeah, just you know, someone, and he'll say he'll say you know that that's easy. Like in Japan, that's easy, that's the norm. That's you know, that's he basically goal. gave up on his dreams and his goals and blah blah blah, and just started becoming a salary man and just going in work, got his paycheck and went home. Like his his whole hobby was the idol. You know, was this was this chick idol, which I'm gonna call it. So it was, that was his uh, way to deal with life. So to speak. Yeah, sort of. So, and then, well, I mean, and then she went. She went on a on a like a um, like like on a local tour, basically, where she was biking it from one city to to another city, and that guy and like a couple of like the hardcore fans were basically following her. Of course, they weren't like being creepy or anything. Like they would, you know, they would like give her some space and distance because she was doing her thing. And of course, they were just there as. Um, because she was going, to, you know, from show to doing a, a show in every city that she went. So of course they went and did their fan thing. They, you know, with the little lights and everything. So they were just there, like they weren't trying to like be like, let me, you know, like let me look at you. <laughs> not, no, no, this let me smash. <laughs> yeah, no, they were like completely like giving her space and everything. And then of course, you know, while she was, because she was also live streaming the 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 whole thing. So while she was doing her live stream, of course they would like back away. They would be, like, somewhere far so that she would do her thing. And then once she was able to, like, talk, they would, like, interact. But then when she did back to her thing, they would back off again. Oh, okay. So it was just... Sounds kind of wholesome so far. Yeah, but the thing that I really liked, though, was that at towards the end, um, she got actually a record deal. Okay. Which was her, her goal, was to be a singer. Right. And then this is why I was, like, you know, it's... It was it ended, you know. It was ending kind of like happy ending because then he's like, you know what? Helping her realize her goals made me want to do his own, do his thing again. And he quit his he quit his salary job and started his own company. Oh, damn! That's beefy. So it's like helping her made her made him basically you know light, light a fire up his ass. But then it got really fucking creepy. Why? What happened? Because all of a sudden, you find out that there's also idols that are 12, 13, 14, 15, 10 years old. Right. Isn't it normal for them to be really young? No. Well, usually it's like, you know, the normal idols is like the 18, 19, 20. And then it gets really creepy where it's like... One guy even says that if you know one one of the one of the girls said, yeah that it, that if she was like uh, that she was like a, a year older or something that he wouldn't be following her. Wait, what? Yeah, age matters to the these people. To the people that are following basically the underage kids. Yeah, then that's where it's like, okay, this got really fucking creepy here. So they won't follow adolescents, in other words. I mean, they'll follow adolescents, or but late they won't. They won't, they won't follow like late teens anymore. Because that's, that's becoming, you know, a woman already. That's strange. So, so it kind of like branches into borderline. It's like, yeah, it's thing? like, it's like the, the 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 legal pedophilia type of thing where it's Legal-ish. like you're not which we call you know, and again, the the handshake events. And it's just like it's really fucking weird, guys. It makes you look at the handshake handshake events differently, doesn't it? Yeah, a lot more different. Like, like you saw the other guy, you know, the the guy that, you know, freaking... Like, you have uh, the wholesome guys? Yeah, the like wholesome guys, and what you would call it, they're, they're admiring her, what you would call it, like, they wouldn't, they they never interfered into our personal space, it was nothing like that. And then you have these guys that's like, yeah, let, 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 let me touch your hand. <laughs> Ew. <And> it's like... <laughs> Ew. Oh, dude, like, Why? 
Like, why is this a thing? It really, it really be like that. It's just like it went from like really wholesome, and then at the end, it was just like like the last fifteen twenty minutes was about like the underage girls. I'm just like, why is this a thing? I like that approach though. It's <laughs> they hit you, they hit you, so- they hit you from the south field. Like, yeah. hey, <laughs> this is like a very rare occurrence. Actually, this is what really goes down. And it's just like holy shit! It's like why is this a thing? And it's like the the thing was that. The girl, like the underage girl that, that they followed at the end, her mom was like, Yeah, you know, we gotta, gotta get her to her lessons. I always, what should we call her? Her dancing and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It was like the whole, like the mom's in on it. And it's just like, and then she's like, Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was kind of weird at first, you know, seeing these, you know, all these older men, you know, freaking basically fawning over her. But I guess she kind of like got used to it. Got used to it. And it's just like, How do you get used to that? It's really, mm, mm. it's like, uh, <laughs> that's, I don't know, man. That's, that's a good question. How do you get used to that? It's just like, I get like the, like the, again, the, the one girl that um, got the record deal when she was doing the tour, um, her dad was also following them and I'm also following her in a, in a, in a, in a van. So it was just like, okay, you know, I get, you know, she's older though. She's like, what should we call it? She... But, yeah, you have a fucking 12-year-old here at, at the end. It's just like, why? Yeah, that's that's really creepy, dude. <laughs> that's, that's mm, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> but... Cause all, yeah, all, like, you know, like, like you said, all of a sudden, those handshake events went from really wholesome to, like, really fucking creepy. Like, hmm, I don't think I'm okay with this <laughs> yeah. anymore. That's, that's... I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know no more. <laughs> On the other hand, another doc that I was watching was, funny enough, um, Zac, Af- uh, Zac Efron was in it. Like, just, he just there? Well, he was like, you know, the, the, the main guy, basically. And him and, I guess, a friend of his, where they were in Iceland. Uh, the first episode was when they were in Iceland, where Iceland is basically, like, completely green. Yeah. Where I thought was really cool. Because apparently, like, they use, you know, of course, they use the, the water to freaking also the, 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 the electricity. Yeah. But apparently when that happens, it also releases CO2. Yeah. But Iceland found a way to basically take the CO2 and put it back underground. Okay. Where it basically int- combines with the freaking rocks and the minerals and all, basically, and it turns into fool's gold and fake diamonds, basically. That is... Kind of amazing, actually. <laughs> right? That is amazing. I was just like, they did, They use every single fucking thing, and then all the, you know, the emissions, you know, the CO2, the dangerous things, they went and put it back in the ground, and they turned it into something. They just basically got the profit? Yeah. The freaking cycles, they're completely green. Meanwhile, they're still, they're still doing Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that's, that's really impressive, though. Do you think if um, they can find a way to input enough uh, force into it, they can probably, what do you call it? <sighs> What's the word? Where you, my words are failing me. Because <laughs> I know diamonds are basically CO2. If they can pressurize it enough, do you think they can make actual diamonds off of that? No. No? That's what. That's one of the things that's just like the only thing they can make out of it is like, um, freaking the fool's gold and the fake diamond, basically. That's but still it's re- like that's still really cool. Yeah, it is. Because you, you can still profit out of that, so. Because people will still buy it. Yeah. You know, it's, as long as it gets the job done, right? And that was really cool. And another part where they basically went to where where there, where there's, there's like a hot spring and there's like sand there. And apparently you can, like, dig the sand and you can put some eggs in and it'll boil them in, like, 13 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's lit. <laughs> just, like, dig a little bit, just freaking throw some eggs in, you know, freaking boil them in 13 minutes and they're good to go. And apparently you can, like, put a whole pot of, like, sourdough bread in it and in 24 hours it'll be done. That's... 
really neat. A little weird, <laughs> but a little weird. I'm more curious about how they figured that out. <laughs> like, some guy was like, oh, let me, let's do this. It's like, let, let me, let, let me freaking uh, cook my, my freaking. Your freaking. It's alarm. Fire alarm? Or a it's burglar not a fire alarm? alarm. Yeah, it sounds like a burglar, burglar alarm. Ooh, the game robbed. Was it me? I would hope it's not you. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been here the whole time. I would hope it's not Jeez. you. Jeez. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're like a mobster or something. I just oh, yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't hurting for cash hunting. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> maybe that's why you became a mobster. <laughs> What's up, hurting for cash? Exactly. What is this? Uh, just a placeholder for a card for a scrap wyvern. No one has that. I know, but I'll eventually pick it up online. What the hell is this thing? That's a monster. Yeah, but what is it? Oh, Scrap Recycler. Yes, sir. So basically, the way the combo works with Scrap Wyvern is you just get this guy plus any machine monster. Then you make the Wyvern, send him to the graveyard. Because the Wyvern destroys this, the Recycler. And pulls out the golem from the deck, and the golem pulls the recycler out of the graveyard back into the field. And then? And then, uh, depending on how you built the deck, you can link it away for another link monster. Or you can just leave it on the field for damage. It's just... It's uh, basically free bodies on the board. It also pulls out cards from your deck, and just helps for just everything. And then, yeah. Which reminds me, what's your, whatchamacallit? Angry what? Angry Potato Gaming. For anyone who wants to go learn Yu-Gi-Oh! And what, what else are you going to put up? Uh, RuneScape, a little bit of Smite. Of course RuneScape. Got to. It started off as a RuneScape thing, but it's like, you know what? Maybe we can do other things too. Maybe if you could we'll talk into your mic. Maybe I don't want to be the bad guy. <laughs> you are being a bad guy at this point. <laughs> Why? I did nothing wrong. Jeez, you did it all wrong. What do you mean I did it all? You did your whole life wrong. That's offensive. It's okay. It's only offensive because it's true. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Help! I'm being abused by my co-host or the actual host. <laughs> what am Wait. I? Am I co-host? My guest speaker? What? What am I? At this You're point? my co-host. What, what are we? <laughs> <laughs> Arrow, arrow, <laughs> help! What's up? What, uh, what's that mean when you've been um, when you've been sleeping together for, and go, meeting each other's parents and going out for dates for three years and they ask you, "What well, are we?" No, I don't know. I have I, no idea what you're talking about. I see this meme sometimes, and the caption is just um, this guy's face, like very uncomfortable looking face, and the caption says, "When you guys have been going on dates, sleeping together for three years, and she asks you, what are we?'" <laughs> Uh, Shit, run, run. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the joke. Like, ooh, we ain't doing this. <laughs> yeah, this is not terrible. But yeah, this is not a terrible uh, modification. But yes, he'll be doing Yu Gi Oh stuff, RuneScape, uh, probably a little bit of Smite. I don't know exactly how much of stuff. Also, there's a couple more stuff. If and when shows and and series coming up to my channel, so stay tuned for that. Some of it will be will be involving Yu-Gi-Oh. Smite will, of course, make a comeback. Smite's dead. Let it go, bro. Nonsense. As I as, as, as I uh, talk about uh, playing Smite, Smite's actually like number twenty-three right now. It it's like a, it made a resurgence during like the COVID thing. Is early, what I noticed. Early twenties. The uh, Avatar Battle Pass really oh, burned a lot of people. It. I know you hate it, but look, man. It's been the first time in a very long time that I had to wait just to get into the game. I kept get, I was getting the servers full. Please wait until we can get you in. Messages. Me and Spencer were doing. Uh, we're and Spencer were playing some Smite games. Still one of the most and overrated we, enemies ever. And we would finish a match and get booted from the server just because it was that packed. I was like, "Fuck this shit." Jeez. <laughs> I mean, whether or not it's overrated, it's overrated. De- it was definitely a smart business move by High Rise. I mean, money grabbing and all, but that was one of their smarter money grabbing. Overrated. Probably, yeah. 
No, no problem. Overrated. All right. So the only issue with this is hand traps. Hand traps. Because no one carries the good ones in stores. Feels bad. But yeah. Overrated. Yeah. I mean, it made the money. That's uh, in terms of like business sense. I was. It was good. They're preying on uh, people's interests. Yeah. Some, uh, this battle pass actually has a higher amount of people that bought tier 60 on the first day than any other one. Overrated. Kind of disappointing because the skins are kind of bad. Yeah, they they're, they look pretty lazy to be honest. Like the models and everything, it's very... It looks very unpolished. It looks lazy. It's like... I don't know, it looks like a fucking clay man. If you ever, like, pick Zuko, or if you ever pick the Zuko skin, it's just, like, very clay, like, like, whoops. Like, he does a little spin, but he looks more like the wacky, inflatable, crazy arm man. ragdoll physics. Yeah, it's, it looks weird. It's like, damn, I can't, they did my boy dirty like this. Of course. Indeed. I don't know, I, feel, I, I don't know. That, that, that could have gone with something better. What would have been a better battle pass, in your opinion? Even though I'm also not 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 a fan, I would have I would, I would have respected JoJo. <laughs> I would have respected that. Even though I'm also not a fan, but I would have respected at least JoJo. His Dio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dio Loki skin. <laughs> Don't forget the yes, 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 yes. Muda, 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 I love I, I love that show just for its nonsensical yelling. That's I liked it. So it was, it was, like I would have again. I'm not exactly. I'm not. I'm not, not a fan either of JoJo, but I would have respected that at least. Just the raw meme factor. Was yeah, delicious. at least that would have said Avatar. Like why? Indeed. So could at least gone with like the movie Avatar. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. The the blue people? Yeah, the blue people. Okay, okay. I, I'm not talking about the real life one. Oh. The IRL freaking Avatar Last Bender. We don't talk about Holy that. Holy crap. No, I talk about it. <laughs> we don't talk about I it. I talk about it. <laughs> we only talk about it insultingly. <laughs> That's horrible. No, actually, people that, are, that aren't, aren't, aren't fans of the anime have, have all... Uh, I, I've seen people have liked it. Well, I feel like that goes for any live action movie or any live action adaptation or anything. New. Oh, oh, oh! Are you okay? Sir? Oh, I just remembered. No, channeling your inner stroke king again. <laughs> 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 Nut. <laughs> no, I was I was reading what you call it on on, on the, 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 uh, the the new um, Ninja Turtles comic book coming out. The new what? The new Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Oh, uh, it's the one where all, Every, three of them died. Three of my dad uh, dead except one of them. Dude, I'm so excited for that. I really want. I am so excited for it. I really want it to be uh, Michelangelo, the last one alive. I don't. Why? Because my favorite is Raphael. That's fair. No, but I, I, feel, I, I was gonna say I don't, I don't think it's that strange that I like Raphael. <laughs> yeah, no, Grouchy. <laughs> no, Rafa, like it would make sense for Raphael because he very much has the Avenger personality. There's like so many arcs where he's like not just the, the what you call, but he's the um, survivalist. Yeah, well, Leonardo too, to some extent. The thing with Leonardo is that he's he's a little more emotional. He hesitates too much. So, yeah, I feel like. Leonardo would have been one of the, would be one of the ones that died trying to save one of the other ones. Yeah, Raphael definitely last man standing. I, yeah. I ship that. But um, but but for story, I think it would be really freaking cool though if it's done on Donatello. That would be interesting because of how Donatello is. For all of a sudden, like everything that happened, could to kind of like shift his way of thinking and being uh, like you know basically the the Avenger, like that's what I was thinking as far as Michelangelo because he's like a fucking goofball. No, but I mean that that's that's kind of like, like like the thing like usually when you're like Too a goofball you're kind of you know it's like oh yeah one of them yeah it's kind of overdone it's like oh the the happy go lucky guy is the one that got turned into a whatever assassin type of thing, but I I like I feel like Donatello would be like. Actually, yeah, not, because Don, because to be like you know, uh, you know, going on a revenge rampage or whatever, that's an emotional thing, and Donatello is very logical, so it'd be like a complete turn or complete one eighty of like, wait, wait, what happened? Actually, yeah, that would be interesting because he's also it's 
you, you can. It's a lot easier to plot armor someone who's already very intuitive and like smart as fuck. Like, he'll be like, "How'd you escape this certain death?" Well. I saw through your bullshit, and then like he'll logically explain why yeah. as he's snapping ribs. You know, yeah. Basically, you know, yeah, yeah. That sounds like Donatello would be like really cool though. You know, yeah, yeah. I I, I stand this. I stand this headcanon. This is a very. I approve of this headcanon. I was like, yeah, but yeah I'm, I'm just because Ra- Raphael too obvious. Leonardo also too obvious. I feel like those two have gotten more than enough standalone movies, or like just standalone arcs. I'll always, I'll always say though, the last, the the, the newest <laughs> TMNT movies. What was the newest one? Well, the the last two. I mean, the the ones by what was it? Uh, the guy from Transformers. Oh, is it the one where the first one is like these statues come out and it's a whole? Because there's one that came out and whether it's like live action but not live action. Yeah, it's like that 3D esque. I like the first one. Uh, the first one was okay. They're both. Uh, the second one uh, was very uh, hard to watch. <laughs> they're both. Uh. I like the first one. Well, I liked it more for the fact that it was like TMNT. It's like, ooh, they got something new. You know, it's like, yes, get something new. First one will always be my favorite. Huh? The first one will always be my favorite. The original, yeah. <laughs> the really bad CGI one where Splinter <laughs> just go- grows really big because <laughs> of the mutagen. <laughs> hey, man. I think it's really cool. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, man. For for what they did for that, you know, the, with the whole suits thing for the turtles. Considering the time and age, it's very, it was a very impressive feat overall. No, it's not just impressive. Though. It still holds. It's like the, what they did, the, the fact that they did with the the you know the whole the whole suit rather than trying to green screen CGI bullshit. Yeah, you gotta have a mix of both. If you over CGI, it gets you kind of get desensitized to it. And you're just like eh, eh, eh. You feel me? Did you hear? Did you did you know that 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 what what was the name of that movie? The the, 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 the the new um, Call of the Wild. Which one's that? Call of the Wild. Giant a blank. Got to remind me. Call. You, you didn't read that book in, in high school? About a dog named Buck? Oh, the cops finally showed up. Anyway, point is... No, I didn't see it. <laughs> point is, is that the Call of the Wild, the new one, with Harrison Ford, where the main character is a dog named Buck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, listening. this is about dogs, right? Okay. The fucking dogs are fucking people in green freaking screen suits. Bless. <laughs> Bless <their laughs> Who are soul. walking around on four legs, <laughs> acting, doing the whole gestures of a dog. The, the furry community loves this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's it was amazing. just like... No, no. The funny part, though, is that there's a behind the scenes, which we call it, where, you know, Harrison Ford, you know, basically, you know, approaches, you know, the... the oh, is it that movie where he's, like, a really old dude? Yeah. And it's, like, a dog sled? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Where he basically, like, walks up to the dog, which is, you know, the guy, and does the scratching behind the ear on the actual guy. <laughs> that must have been really uncomfortable. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> it's just, like, why does this freaking hi- get dogs like every other freaking movie? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, just, <laughs> I, I can just imagine him saying that. Like, <laughs> it's like, why? But yeah, I mean, the freaking green screen, freaking dog CGI dogs. Because whatever reason. <laughs> but no, there's Harrison Ford freaking scratching behind the ear of some guy. <laughs> That's amazing. It's just like how far, how far have things gone? How how far have things become? When, when do we draw the line? Yeah, basically, <laughs> it's like jeez, enough with the CGI. Holy shit! That's amazing. <laughs> Ooh, <wee. laughs> it's like 
You know, special effects are supposed to be special effects, not the movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like a lot of movies are trying to half like I feel like they're cutting down a lot on the writing budget and the scripts just for explosions. Like um, the other day, I watched Bumblebee, the Transformers movie. Oh God! I was so disappointed. Oh God! You don't understand how disappointed I was. Like, I'm not super into the Transformers, but like I like some of the characters. Like, oh, all right, it was cool. When the movie started, it was nothing but hype. You see John Motherfucking Cena. <laughs> So I was like, I saw John says like, all right, it's going to be an interesting movie. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like at first I was wondering why were there so many blank frames, blank scenes? Like, oh, it's John scene. <laughs> but. I'll tell you, you couldn't see him, man. I couldn't see him. <laughs> he I, was there the whole time. Exactly. He was there the whole time. He was there the whole movie. Give this man a raise. He was in every single shot, <laughs> even if you didn't see him. <laughs> and uh, just the movie just sucked because. The first 20 or 30 minutes, it was great. They're doing a military exercise. You see John Cena roasting the shit out of, like, another actor. I was living for it. Then, like, the explosion comes, big robot fight. And then they throw all that away. And it just turn into your basic, boring suburban life focused on, like, the angsty teenager hating their life story. But it wasn't even well done. It was, like, it wasn't even anything dramatic. It was just, like, mundane and ordinary. But for like an hour straight, like it's, they build this character up so much. And at the end of the movie, the last 20 minutes, it goes back to John Cena doing John Cena things and like explosions and fighting and like actually cool things that you want to watch. And they kill off the character. <laughs> like the movie ends, they kill off this character and her whole family that they built an entire world for, for 60 to 70% of the movie. They just kill her off immediately. I was like, why the fuck would you do that? Like, I was just oh, tilted. Man. I was just tilted over that. It's like, it's like, we're here doing this podcast, right? I'm like, hey, start here at zero. You know, we're talking about like whatever. And then like we end it with, oh yeah, zero's not here anymore. It's, I'm the captain now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was that kind of thing. It was like, but I feel like the way I, th that scenario I explained is more exciting than the way they pulled it off in that movie. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just slapping. It's just things. like, I don't know. I was, like, I, was, I was generally mad. Like, I watched it for free because I have Amazon Prime. It's on Amazon Video. If you guys want to watch it yourself. It's free. It's two hours of your life. You're probably never going to get back. I'd rather not. I'd rather keep those two hours. I mean, have it in the background if you're doing something, maybe. Because you only... They can cut out minutes. No, what, you're say what you're saying is that... You'd, uh, you, you, you'd, you'd be more productive by watching John Cena memes for two hours. No, you'd be uh, more productive replaying that YouTube video of the John Cena prank call. Prank phone call. <laughs> <'Cause> John <laughs> Cena! In the spit swapping makeout match. <laughs> I remember that thing came out when I was in high school and it was just That's the hilarious. fucking... It was the funniest thing ever. It was great. I, I, I remember when the R RKO thing, RKO meme came out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a very powerful meme. Like, watch out, watch out, watch out, RKO. That shit was too funny. It was, just, it was good stuff, you know? It was, it was good stuff. Not, not, but yeah, it's, trans, it's like they milk the Transformers so hard. I, was just, I don't know, it's just milking the freaking CGI now. It's just like... It's all explosions. Like, oh, like herder, explosions, just, we're good now. It's like, bro, no. Please. It's just like, eh. Plus, no. You know, it's... Like, how I always say, how, like, how... How... No no matter what anyone said, like, the cheesiness of, like, the the the, the OG uh, TMNT compared to the new one, it's like... Yes, I get it, you know, the the, the, the face structure or whatever, and uh, the new one probably you know, works... Functions better than the freaking masks. Like it was cheesy, but bad. At least, but it had substance. And it seemed, it was, it fit more into the movie. Yes. It was a little more like realistic, basically, because it's like okay, they're like, yeah, it was cheesy. It was, it was kind of wonky, but it worked. It worked out quite well. It's 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 sort of like that thing with like the new freaking um, like. Um, 
we we talked about it last time, like with the with the new Star Wars. Oh yeah. Compared like the new Star Wars graphics compared to the OG. I mean, where they had to do like the physical, freaking special effects. Yeah, I mean, certainly it looks a lot prettier, but at what cost? Yeah. And then of course, the one thing that like eighty percent of the movies lack now story. Yeah, it's like story. It's like substance. It's like it's like let's make it flashy by making things go boom, because like we her, ain't got a really good story here. Like <laughs> CG, CGI go burr. <laughs> it's, it's very it's very lacking. It's very lacking. It's it's very lacking. It's very upsetting. <laughs> like I don't think there's really any words that can capture how upsetting it is. I remember there was a freaking, there was a, a freaking picture where this, where this girl took a picture with John Cena, and she posts it. And everyone's like, well, why are you standing there by yourself? Yeah, no, she's like, she, you know, she put a caption, she's like, oh, you know, I saw, I saw John, John Cena at Target, blah, 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 you know, and then people are like, why, why don't you take a picture of him? <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> and that was a picture of, of, of him freaking in a in, in, a, in a in a jeep, and people are like, "Hey, man, I saw this jeep driving by itself." <laughs> I love that the the commit the raw commitment that everyone's had to that meme is just you can't see it, man. It's like one of those few things that the online community is like just united on. Just who's John Cena? I haven't we haven't seen him in years. I don't know. No one's seen him. He's aloof. He's out there. He out here. All right. We out here. So when's your first video going to come out? Which one? First video. Good question. Good question. Probably when I figure this shit out. I don't know. I'm not sure where to start, I guess. I mean, I know it's all about doing it, obviously. But, uh, well, I guess for starters, what game? You know, because I'm like trying. Or what I was thinking about doing, actually, was. Talk. What I was planning is just making a few videos and, like, just dump uploading them, like, all at once to, like, kind of premiere the channel, so to speak, because I feel like if I suddenly have, like, ten videos, it would be a little bit more appealing than, like, you just have one video that's hit or miss. I, I don't know if that makes They're sense. They're all going to be hit and miss. Well, yes, but statistically speaking, if you have ten different videos... They're not going to click on a lot of They'll click on one. No, I know, but... If you have more option and variability, you have like the higher chance of even getting a click to begin with. But it's not gonna be what you call it because it's all oh, still gonna be the exact same. It's gonna be Yu-Gi-Oh or RuneScape or what you call it. Yeah, that's why. So I wanna I wanna have at least one for each of the categories I plan on doing, so I can like make it clear that I'm trying see, to see, diversify. See, 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 but it goes back to when. Uh, let's see. Definitely by the end of July. Oh wait, what what the, what's today's date? <laughs> Um, well, it depends on how quickly I learn how to do the premiere and Photoshop and all the things. I would love to have it by the end of July, mid-August at the latest. That's like enough time for you to like, uh, I'll, I'll do it later. Eh, sort of, but it's just... I don't want to be unrealistic and be like, oh, by the end of this week, because I just don't have the time this week. Like, I'm thinking for this week and next week, gathering the assets, you know, the clips, the images, uh, the data. That's why, I'm, that's why I've been tinkering with this shit all day, the data. And then when I finally have everything, I want to start production by, like, mid, by the end of next week. And then I just want to spend the rest of August, because if I'm lucky, I'll understand everything right away. But I'm giving myself the little cushion time to actually learn how to do things properly. It's all a matter of, like, how much editing you do. Yeah, I want to do a decent amount. I don't want it to look too plain and boring, I guess. Like, it's... I don't know. I want to make a good first impression. <laughs> as cringy as that sounds. From you? Yeah. What do you mean, from me? <laughs> Sir? You heard me. What does that mean? You heard me. I don't know what that means. Exactly what you think it means. Rude. I don't know. But anyways, as far as this, I'm pretty excited because I realized this card can also search out spells and traps, which cuts out 
Well, I don't really need trade-in for starters because the deck searches itself out completely. It is too slow. I was running two because I thought I would have to draw it, but then I realized I can just search it. And we don't really need a draw engine when the deck itself just shits stuff out. Draws. It doesn't draw, but it's like... Uh, let's see, where is it? This guy dumps to the graveyard. I think it would be a little more entertaining if you actually mentioned what it was instead of saying this guy. Okay, well, Scrap Recycler. All right, here we go. Teaching Eternal how to YouTube. Rude. Okay. <laughs> so I was playing uh, Psalm Strike because it's a decent trap card, but what I was realizing with playtesting... So you already, you, you already went wrong. You got to say, what deck is this? The Machina deck. <laughs> <laughs> The most mechanized madness structure deck, reloaded. I don't know. It says reloaded on the box. Um, yeah, I was running uh, trap heavy because I was more centralizing it around going first. But I kind of realized a lot of the traps are kind of dead weight because the deck performs pretty well regardless. And the trap, the spell trap cards that I ended up putting in was just one and one because you can search it out with this other card called Ma Machina Machina Redeployment. And yeah, just, I don't know. I'll go more into detail about that later on. But basically, I have easy access to every almost every card in the deck, which is quite nice. It's quite nice. I just need to find a place that sells Called by the Grave. I got one. Uh, I mean, that's, that's also why I'm saying let's. I'm just going to deal with the simulator because... <laughs> I don't have I'm just proxying for Namita. I guess, but I don't, I don't like proxying. It's, it's just weird. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll at least get the ball rolling at some point. I suppose, yeah. But, um, yeah. So I've cleared out five empty spaces. And this card, uh, Machina Megaform, is a brick. And let's see, where did I do oh. So yeah, I like running two machine cannons because it's really good for helping me get my play started and the one mega form. So I have these seven spaces, but I also need to get three metal crunchers. Also, something people don't carry anymore <laughs> feels bad. Uh, yeah, this is just. But yeah, I'm liking the direction it's going in. For lack of better words. So what are you? What are you gonna put up? What? Uh, you meant, you, all you said was games, but what are you going to put up? Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Old School RuneScape was what the original the? thing. What? What about them? Oh, just, uh, you know, structure deck stuff uh, for Yu-Gi-Oh! Just basic. Uh, like, my target audience is people that are like, have either been gone from the game or just never really picked it up. And they don't want to put much effort in gathering a bunch of individual cards. Just pick up these three structure decks and start rolling with uh, progression paths because it's very easy to find the maxed out version of anything but depending on how you're going to go about it maybe you want to do it one step at a time especially with these uh, financially awkward times just stuff like that and then explaining your, card choices all for your general ho hobbyists yep for your general hobbyists people that want to just have the thing handy but not super competitive because that would require me getting good first <laughs> 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 like um, average at best, but you know, hobbyist I guess is a good is a very good word for it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, that's Yu-Gi-Oh and uh, old school RuneScape, just general shenanigans, memeing around. Uh, I kind of want to do a four dummies guide for things that a lot of players are very uneasy about doing. That's in. Like this is one mini game called Barbarian Assault that people. Um, well, the way the game works is it has an in-game economy. So some people, to avoid dealing with actually learning how to do things or grinding stuff out, will pay upwards of 20 mil in the uh, in-game currency to get something that, in normal circumstances, will take you like two to three hours, maybe four hours to grind out, just to like not put any work. So... It's just a way to like show people, no, look, it's actually really easy. Here's how you do it. Because <laughs> um, the problem with a lot of the guides I see is for the most part, they assume you already know how to do all the things. So I want to take a fundamentals approach, starting with the basic stuff. Like, oh, this is 
this is the little feature you want to use, this is the feature you need, and then just kind of spoon it to them that way from there, so you can start building. Because it's very frustrating as uh, someone who doesn't understand certain things, when they start using like technical jargon and stuff, like if I were to start saying, oh, you have to do the flicks, you need to position this here, tick, you know, to tick manipulation, just a bunch of uh, scary words that make people not want to do things, so. I mean, that, that, uh, that, that's me to think that's, of ticks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, the game has its own unit you know, measurement called ticks, so it's like 0. 0.6 sec seconds or something like that, and a lot, some of the game mechanics require you just abusing the time, which is kind of ridiculous, saying it out loud, but some people are really hardcore about the game that way. And then Smite. Oh, uh, how to ward? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that should be a freaking ten minute tutorial. Like, <laughs> with Smite, I kind of want to be more memey. Like, I want to give life advice, like you know how to play the game. But I'm also gonna be really disrespectful about it. Be like, listen here, you piece of shit. <laughs> god damn. Because I think the community has like a, just a huge acid problem. I was getting I, I was playing ranked the other day and I was getting flamed because uh, I was supporting and my ADC he has a free ward he would not ward like he refused to use his little active item for the ward. I I, I will always say though I find it hilarious how seven out of ten even if I'm doing bad you'll get blamed for it. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. Like doesn't matter what role I play, <laughs> everyone just like fuck this guy. <laughs> Like, damn. No, but that's what happened. So pretty much, you know, after a certain point, you're supposed to roam. I feed the guy. I, well, the guy was dropping kills, so I was taking the kills. So I was like 4-0 and oh. <laughs> as Sobek, you know, big surprise. And um, the guy, so the guy leaves, doesn't tell me he's leaving, and I get, you know, I get Cupid and Kumba ulted, you know. Of, huh. cor of course you're going to die <laughs> nine times out of ten to that. And the guy's making a big deal about how I died and complaining. I'm like, okay then, good luck. I'm gonna go roam. I roam around the map. I get everyone else like fed. I'm essentially winning the game for everyone. And this guy just stays in lane the whole time, just talking shit. Hey okay, man. And like, you do your job. he was a farm bot. He did not leave lane until the game reached a point where they took all of our objectives, and he had to defend Titan. And the guy was like, blame Sobek. Mr. 1 in 11, <laughs> Shibalanke. <laughs> Wanted to blame me, who had top kills and top damage <laughs> as support. Hey, man, that's how it goes. That's how it goes, yeah. So, you know, just little things like that. How to not be a piece of shit. I might put a link on uh, interpersonal interactions, because I feel like people forget that, you know, you, don't want, you shouldn't be a total asshole to strangers. Nonsense. It's I mean, fun. What do you mean nonsense? Nonsense. Nonsense. You know, just general. Just, hey, remember, just, remember when I used to bully your duo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like that. <laughs> Let's see. So I want to fit... I don't know. I don't think this card is worth running too much of. I'm just make, trying to make room for shit. For what, though? Well, I want to run uh, three called by the Graves. And well, we already got freaking... Eight card out. And then I also want to run like three of either Effect Veiler or Ghost Ash. And then I also need to run two to three Metal Crunchers. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to drop this to two and run three Metal Crunchers. And these are my hand traps. Because. Where were you running the trap holes on? Huh? What, where were you running the trap holes on? I was running it here when I was first building it, but then I realized the trap hole mechanic is not very. Doesn't really work with it too well. Oh, yeah. And put him back in this. Oh, hilarious thing. Um, there, there's a new Trap Tricks card. I don't know, or maybe you gave it to me. I don't remember. The Trap Tricks trick or something like that. Trap Trick trick or. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> say, what, say that five times in a row. <laughs> trap Tricks. Let's see. Oh, just straight up Trap Trick. I would actually run that in. Uh, well, it's actually a very common. I don't have. It's actually really good because. I would. <laughs> this card gives me hope for uh, let's see, running Teller Knights again because. Never have hope. 
Huh? You should never have hope. No, because this one's nice. Hope you banish bad. you banish trap card from your uh, deck, and you can set another one with the same name, and you can actually activate it the same turn. So, this card is like one of the reasons why Salomon Grades are still good because they just wow. shit out Reflesia turn one, and then they just use this to like stun whatever the hell their opponent's gonna do. And yeah, so. Definitely going to be having some fun, but I think uh, the build is pretty much done for now. Or I'm going to playtest it online, see how it works out for me. But aside from that, it's... This is... Uh, I have a good feeling about this. I just got to get the damn cards. <laughs> I don't know. I'll do it online. What are you doing later? Oh, wait, no, I'm busy today. <laughs> Fucking hell. So, what, <laughs> so the way my week went, right, was... I look at the schedule... I already got, like, my four days of work set up. And I'm like, cool, all right. I have Thursday, Friday off. So I could do one day, you know. Well, originally you said Wednesday, Thursday. I thought it was Wednesday, Thursday, but I read it wrong. So it was Thursday, Friday. And I'm like, cool. Thursday can be cold brew grind day. Friday could be date day, you know. Easy balance. Lots of adequate time for me to do my own personal things, like sleep, because... I don't, I don't know. I just never feel rested. You don't need to sleep. I don't know, man. You look sleep like a fucking, for the week. you were a fucking zombie this morning. Hey, man. I had freaking just lay down. But you just said sleep is for the week. I make, said lay down. I didn't say sleep. Make up your mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why I said it's lay down, not sleep. Jeez. But, um, yeah, it was just shenanigans like that. So what originally happened was the one of my coworkers, he moved and he lives like Disneyland, near Disneyland, and my workplace is like Hollywood. So for him to get to work, he has to leave his house like three to four hours before the shift <laughs> and take the bus back. So the guy can only do mid shifts because that's how logistics work. But on top of that, we had an individual who, um, I think his foot got broken, or I don't know what happened, but the guy who would always close, had a medical emergency and he's not working until August and on top of that we were already short and uh, we were already short like a tech associate or whatever so they can't spare because normally they would spare like a tech person and have them cover OS and just straight up there's no coverage so I, I go into work yesterday and boss is like hey I need these shifts covered. Which one do you want? Or which ones do you want? I'm like, all right, I'll do Thursday. You know, heck it. I'll just come do the, I'll just come do the cold brew grind early. And then I can like rest Friday before going to work Saturday. And then he's like, cool. I go into work. I'm sorry, it was two days ago. Then I go in yesterday. He's like, actually, I can't have you do Thursday. I need you for Friday. I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> so I'm like, what do you mean? Because apparently... In terms of the pecking order, I am the lowest in the pecking order. Of course. You know, as things usually tend to be. So the other person that he was relying on to cover... To cover on... What day was it? Friday? Could not do Friday. So he was like... So the, the guy got Thursday. And essentially... Got fucked. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> to put it in simplest terms, so, and then on top of that, my shift Saturday got extended, so I close tomorrow, and then I close Saturday too. But I work eight hours on Saturday, so I work. I'm working all day, so it's very, very irritating times. Nah. So, yeah, that's that's my week. Sounds fun. It's it's something. <laughs> If you do add one... You know, the structure deck is actually kind of decent. The Cybers one. Yeah, I have my... Well, I mean, I have the the two. Oh, the same one? Or a different one? The This one and the other structure. Oh. I might actually make something out of these three just for the giggles, but I think it's a little old to actually... Yeah. You know, not like Dinosaurs where they got reprinted. That was like... Big, big pee pee. All right, anyway, well, <laughs> you're like, anyways, once you start saying weird shit like this, yeah, you know it's time. Anyway, see you guys next time. Thanks for hanging around. <laughs> 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 Let's get started saying weird stuff now. So, I think that's it. What do you mean, weird stuff?
Rude. Jeez. Anyway, see you guys. It's big. Bye. Energy. Bye. <laughs>